What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles back at you with another video. Today we're going to talk about how to use a snake hook for handling, taming, and tap training. Before we actually show a snake off, let's talk about what a snake hook is. This is an essential tool for reptile keeping. Now this specific one is a pinning and a snake hook on both ends. The importance of something like this is that if you have venomous snakes, now we don't have venomous snakes, we don't plan to pin anything, but I do kind of like this end because it's a little bit less harsh if a snake bites it. This end is cushioned and it has a lot of kind of texture to it so that it, snakes are not gonna hurt their teeth if they bite into it. Whereas this end, if a snake bites it, they could harm their teeth. And that's the last thing we want to do when we're taking these animals out of their enclosures. We don't want to scare them. We want every interaction to be positive. However, they do sometimes need a little influence to show them that we're not food and we're not there to hurt them. So the importance of a snake hook really is using it consistently over time. So if you guys have ever seen the old trick where you tap on the side of the goldfish tank and then you throw some food in, eventually if you tap, they come to the top and they knew food is coming. We're somewhat doing the exact opposite of this. If you're feeding in your enclosures, this is gonna be important because they need to recognize the difference between hands and food. So what we're gonna do is essentially, when we open up the enclosure, we're just gonna tap the snake's head with this hook. And I'm gonna show an example here in a minute. So just bear with me, this is the educational piece on how to use this thing. But we're just gonna tap the snake's head with this very gently. We're gonna kind of maybe rub its body and that over time will let them know something is coming in to grab me. So once we tap, we're gonna go in, turn that feeding response off and we're gonna go in and grab. Let's go show an animal and we'll talk a little bit more about how to use this and what not to do with the snake hook. So the first snake we're gonna show this off with is a blood Mayan. This is a Mayan blood, it wasn't the best looking example as a baby, but it was the only one I had and I wanted to preserve those genetics. Now he can be a little bit feisty because his feeding response is incredible. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap him just gently and right there his feeding response got turned off. He knows anything else coming into this cage is not food. Now that doesn't mean he's not gonna bite me. He's still defensive, nervous when I get him out of the cage, and some will say even a little bit aggressive, but aggressive isn't the appropriate term. It just tends to be something that we usually use in defining an animal that wants to bite you. But now that his feeding response has turned off, he's thinking, his tongue is flicking, and we can go in and pick this animal up. So this animal is totally in thinking mode. He's curious, he's looking around. He might still be a little bit defensive because he's not sure of who I am and what I'm doing. This guy does know who I am and what I'm doing at this point, but that's something that we wanna do after we turn the feeding response off. If I just went in and grabbed this animal, he's gonna think my hand is food and that's the exact opposite of what we wanna try to do. As you can see, his behavior in general is super curious now, and he wants to kind of come out and see what I'm doing. What we do not want to do with the hook is actually loop the animal and pick them up. Now with smaller snakes, this is maybe okay, but as you get larger animals, this tiny little hook, and I'm not gonna do it, but I'll show you, but this tiny little hook can really damage the ribs of the animal. You can break ribs and you can hurt the animal in the process. So snake hooks are not for picking up. Snake hooks are just to keep the snake away from you. If this snake were defensive or a little bit more defensive, his whole kind of body I could keep away. We're gonna show one really angry snake, super defensive and nervous, and I'll show you kind of how I use this hook to keep the animal away from me. This snake right here is a very defensive snake. So he already knows food isn't coming because I've pulled his bin out and I've put it on the table, but just to try to turn that off, you can see him, he's coiling up, he's getting super tight, and that's him ready to strike. If I get any closer, he's probably gonna try to go for my hand. If you can see in the camera, he's edging towards my hand, he's still curious, his tongue is flicking, but he's super defensive. This is the typical, actual, like perfect defensive snake mechanism right here, where he's just posturing up, coming closer, 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 staying, stay away from me, don't touch me, but we're gonna do it anyways because he really just doesn't know who I am. So we're not gonna hurt him, we're gonna be real gentle, just kind of, that just got him thinking, just that touch to the head. Now he's still highly defensive, but just this is kind of getting him thinking of like, what the heck is touching me? So he's edging towards me. He's still he's gonna probably try to bite me, but this is how I'm using this side of the hook to keep him away. If I had a traditional snake hook side, I'm doing this, I'm just redirecting his head. This allows me to go in his cage, clean what I need to. I can spot clean, do everything I need to keep this animal healthy and thriving, 
keeping him at a safe distance and not allowing him to hurt me. Now, people say, I'm not afraid of getting bit. I don't care. It's not about you and you getting bit. It's about if you get bit, this snake, every time it uses its teeth, could damage its teeth. And what we want to do is keep this snake from biting us so that they don't damage themselves. So we will try to see if we can get this guy out. But if you can see how I'm using this snake hook, it's just constantly keeping the head away. If I touch his tail, he's going to be kind of waking up. What the heck is that? His tongue is on high alert still super defensive only reason why he's not in that perfect strike pose is because i had the hook redeflecting his head now the camera and the lights are certainly not helping anything but i have him up he's still trying to bite me so he's trying to get closer to my hand now and i just continuously try to redirect that head he's even trying to wrap my hand so he can get closer to my hand to stay get away from me and he's just trying to get me close so he can bite me as he thinks that's his best defense and his best way of keeping me away from picking him up. He's probably right, and if this were in the wild, he's definitely right. So let's see if we can get him up. Beyond what we just did, we want to just try to calm him down a little bit. Let him know that we're not here to hurt him, but he's just super defensive. Super nervous. Yeah, we're gonna leave him alone. We don't wanna stress him out too much, but you can see how nervous this animal was. And I wanna be clear, not all my animals are like this. We actually had to move some lights to get this specific guy out. This is really unique and rare for a boa to be this nervous. However, it happens. And if I handle this guy regularly, after about a month or two, he's gonna be really good. As you see, he's still trying to bite me. But if I did this consistently, this would be one good handling episode for him. This would be episode one never gonna touch this guy I'm gonna put him back and I would do this repeatedly every day for about a week or two maybe I'd give him some breaks off to let him de-stress but short episodes five ten minutes at a time of me just standing here and not touching him not harming him just doing kind of gentle kind of touches with the hook while he continues to do this goes back to his enclosure he'll get more comfortable with being around me and he'll realize that I'm not gonna try to hurt him Every time I do this, I want to push it a little bit more. So in this instance, I'm just touching him. I'm letting him know that I'm here, but I'm not going to hurt him. And then I'll put him back to his enclosure and he'll get a chance to think about that. Next time he comes out, we'll do the exact same thing and just push it a little bit more, a little bit more every week, every day until I can pick him up, pick him up for about a minute and a half, two minutes, put him back, put him back in the enclosure. Over time, this is going to add up to a long journey of this guy becoming a much more friendlier animal. We may try that as an experiment with this guy. I may put some time and effort. We'll do another follow-up video of how calm this guy has become. Can't promise you it's going to work because some snakes are just nervous. They're just defensive as they are. They were born that way and they're not going to change. But for the most part, I've never seen a snake that could not really be tamed down to the point where you could take them out and get them comfortable with you at least acknowledging and respecting them as what they are while allowing them to get some exercise and enrichment outside of the enclosures. Now that we've looked at a defensive, a super defensive snake, Let's look at some babies and we'll try to read the body language a little bit. Let's try to understand what they're thinking and what their mindset is. So we have three separate babies here. We have a, I think it's a super hypo jungle arabesque VPI. We have a Mayan super hypo blood. And then we have a pink panther hypo jungle arabesque that's het VPI. A lot of combos going on here. That's a mouthful of words, but we have three very different animals and three very different reactions, which is why I thought this was a good group to pick. So this animal was completely calm and docile, this VPI over here, the visual, and now she just realized my hand's here. She's a little bit nervous and she's just trying to figure out what I'm doing. This animal right here is a little bit more defensive. As you can see, it's kind of edging towards me. Look very similar to that second super defensive animal that we looked at, is it's kind of edging towards me. I wouldn't be surprised if she struck out and tried to bite. And then this animal over here is just chilling. Has no idea what's really happening. Well, she does, she sees me, but she's fine. She's just kind of like not nervous, not afraid. She's just doing her thing, waiting to see what's gonna happen next. When I go to interact with these animals, again, I use my snake hook and I just tap this one gently on the head. I'll do the same thing for this one, although I'm gonna use this side because it's, I feel like this is a little baby. I don't wanna, I don't wanna hurt it. I'm just gonna tap it gently. And right there, you see there's a totally different reaction. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but very, very different reaction to this animal specifically as soon as I just kind of gently touch it. It's thinking now. It went from trying to be defensive to what the heck was that? 
That's all the tap training is doing, is it's just getting them thinking. It's getting them out of their instinctual mode, and it's trying to get them to think about what's actually happening. So with babies, I don't really have to worry about them biting me, and they really can't hurt their teeth. Like an older animal, their teeth can get into you pretty good, and they can damage those teeth. Babies, it can happen, so we want to avoid it to avoid the damage to the animal, but they really don't sink their teeth the same way like an adult animal does. So let's just get this animal out. He's thinking, or she's thinking the whole time, and now she's in flight mode. She wants to get away. What the heck just happened to me? I'm going to try to move and get away. Now that she's up, she's back to thinking again. Still a little bit flight mode, but every time I just kind of put my hand near the front of her face, she's back to thinking, back to trying to figure out what the heck's happening. Her tongue's on high alert, and she's just moving around being really cool and gentle at this point. This is the ideal situation where they know it's happening. She's not defensive. She's not going to bite me. She just kind of wants to chill out and explore, see what's happening. This animal down here, if you can see where her head's going, she's following my hand every time I go in. To not make her more nervous, I'm just going to pick her up. And this is a more typical defensive mechanism where instead of trying to flight, she's trying to figure out if she should run or if she should bite. Now she's back to just exploring. Really nice, really gentle animal. She wants to get away, but we'll just let her do her thing. She's cruising. Now at this point, she may turn around and try to become defensive. She may rear up at me because she's now free. She got picked up. She's still nervous. She's a new baby, but she's not sure if I'm gonna try to pick her up again. So she's now kind of racing, trying to get away, but just a simple touch on towards the front of the face is perfect to get them back into that mode. This girl right here was more sleeping than anything, but she was awake watching what was happening. And very similar, same reaction that we have. She's now up. You see those fast head movements, the, the tongue's going on high alert, very, very fast tongue flicks. They're going in each direction. That's what you want to see from an inquisitive animal, but she's still just nervous. If I had her out here for about five minutes, I have no doubt that she would be a perfectly calm animal, and she's already somewhat doing that. This animal's very kind of nervous and wants to get away, so she's trying to race out of here. Now that we've looked at that, I hope you guys have a better understanding of how to properly use a hook and what not to do while using that hook. On the total opposition, this is a really sweet, gentle guy. He's been out. He was just a good little baby as just a, for, as soon as he came out, he was excellent. This is a hypo fire. Doesn't get enough love here because he's a little bit more simple in genetics, but he stood out in the litter when I had him and I thought he was just a beautiful animal, so we kept him. So he's here, probably never breed him, but he's my little resident pet, as well as others that I have. As I mentioned, how calm he is, look at him go. So this is him just trying to get out of the, out of the light, out of the view, go back to, back to where he was. I woke him up, he was sleeping. So with all that said, guys, I appreciate you all watching this channel. If you're looking for any kind of snake that you want to add to your collection, make sure you check out my website. If you're looking for a community that you want to join and be with similar like-minded reptile keepers, make sure you check out my Patreon. Links are in the description below. And until next video, let's keep it moving.